Okay, hey guys, so this is Theo, and I had a video idea that I wanted to do today where I just talk about an art portfolio. So specifically, like if you've been drawing for a while now, or even if you've started, and you have somewhat of a collection of art that you've made, uh, it occurred to me that it's really important as an artist to just think about your art and display and share your art. Uh, so one thing that gave me confidence a while back was putting together a lot of my sketches and printed out works that I've done for commissions over the years and put that into a binder and just looked at it. And like, for some reason, it took me a while to just do that. And then think to myself like, wow, this is, this is what I accomplished. This was, these are pieces of art that I can hold that are tangible that I made because sort of as a digital artist, you're always on a screen you're not using traditional mediums, and I really don't see the difference in creating something digitally or physically, but there's something about when you have a sketchbook or you check out an artist's sketchbook, seeing something on paper about it just is very impactful, other than just, you know, scrolling through Twitter or whatever and just checking out art on your phone, giving it a like or whatever. Something about physically holding it is just so much more uh, impactful to me, and I think that uh, it really does give me a confidence boost. So when I see uh, artwork in that kind of physical medium, I, I get way more pride and not to get too narcissistic, but I, I feel very proud that this is these are like the, the sort of landmarks for like over the years, this is what I accomplished and put out into the world. So this is why I want to go over real quick. If you haven't made... A sort of compilation or a sketchbook if you've been a digital artist I think that it's really good to bring that physically into the world so you can put up a portfolio and set it on your shelf and check it out every once in a while because it just reaffirms in at least my brain that I did this I did this thing and I can do more of it and I can improve it and that's what I want to get into so this is my art portfolio and the way I went about it is something that I want to talk about. It's a Google Photos book. And you can basically, like I mentioned before, you can print out things yourself and put it together. But I found this medium to be very helpful. I wanted to just have sort of this professional feeling uh, book. So, like, it's pretty cool. You could see that it's totally bound like any other book that you would see on, like, a retail shelf or anything that you go to Borders and just pick up. But... Um, they don't specify an art either. You can literally go on the website and I think it starts at like 14 or 15 bucks that you could start choosing albums from your Google photos and put it together and then they'll compile it, physically print it, bind it, and then ship it to you. So I wanted to retool that into an art portfolio, something that I could just, you know, put on my shelf and just share with people physically. Like, if you want to say, like, hey, you make art, like, what do you do? Uh, well, here's my art portfolio. You can hand it over. That's what I wanted to do. Um, so it's really cool. And, yeah, let's, let's check it out today. Okay, so we're just going to focus on the book. And I just kind of wanted to do a quick review of, like, the quality that you're going to get from this and how you can set it up. So I took a front image. Uh, that I already made as an art piece that I have on my gallery online. And then I slapped it over here because I thought it would be like kind of this cool, you know, front facing uh, picture for my book. Uh, this whole white section, though, is uh, out of your control. The only thing you can do is put a image above it. And then this uh, portion of the book has to be just filled with a little bit of text. So I just n simply named mine art portfolio because that's what it was. And they do a little cool little um, binder, uh, binding, what do you call this? The spine of the book where you can name it. I think I think you can name it independently of the title of the cover, but it might be the same. I'm for, I forgot it's been a couple of years. But yeah, so let's get into it. Um, it's really cool, really simple. The book, though, I believe only comes in this square ratio kind of Instagram style. So you are going to have to play with some of your art if it comes in like wide or 16 by 9. Uh, the way I set this up now was when you look at my portfolio, I wanted to put a lot of my rough, sketchy stuff in the front. 
and then it'll sort of gradually, as you see, become colored and more of my finished works. So I just started off with my fursona here, uh, just in a cool pose. Um, I, d I threw in some other commission work sketches that I've done over the years. Uh, it's my boy my boyfriend, Blarg, and I chilling, cool posing. And one of my other friends, Reed, that I did back in, oh, wow, 2019. It's important to date your work and sign it. Always sign your work. So we have some more sketches, Blarg and I. Uh, this was another commission for like a D and D character. I really like how this one came out. This is where I was exper experimenting more with um, my thicker, bolder lines. Uh, but you can also see like they are squares, but I just resize the image digitally to fit perfectly on the page. And yeah, this also gives you an idea of the print quality that you can see uh, on each page and how well the darkness comes out. I mean, I'm recording on a 1080p webcam at the moment, but I think it shows just enough of the quality to see what you're going to get. Uh, so some more sketches over the years. Uh, let's see. Uh, just, and my idea behind this was, again, just showing, like, the person who, ooh, I like this one. It This one, I, I like how it came out because the idea was just to go for, like, sort of this Blade Runner movie scene, action scene on a motorbike. Uh, I love how that came out. Uh, so there, <laughs> yeah, anyway, back to the main idea of the, the flow of how I organized this book was to just show people like how I go about my creative process. Like I have some sketches in the beginning and then for bigger projects, you can see, like I even included, uh, some really rough thumbnails so that you could see how I formulate my ideas. I usually make, uh, two to three thumbnails for larger pieces. Uh, here's a title card that I use for my podcast, uh, and there are some days also where I'm on Twitter where I'll ask fursuiters or just furries in general for, uh, you know, some cute poses of their fursuits. And then I do a little study of their pose and their character, and then I'll just try to sketch that out as a warm-up. I really enjoy doing these. So, uh, yeah, I did a couple of them here. Uh, I really, for some reason, I don't even drive motorcycles or have a motorcycle's license, but I always love how they look. They look so cool. So I threw my Sona on there looking pretty cool and riding on it uh some more <laughs> some more just like random like playful idea things that i don't do they're mostly one-offs so these are just screen grabs of like some <laughs> like this character i drew from i think it was a flash gets uh youtube video that i screenshotted and then just drew the cute version of the sona they made fun of um <laughs> i love it so much uh and then here's some more like lineless work that I that I do you can see a before and after and just more like single characters I love drawing if you can if you couldn't tell it right now I just mostly like drawing single character poses and stuff uh, and then you can see like more of the finished work now where we're getting more into like sort of flat illustration territory here uh, so uh, yep got more cool poses for you and I like to do simple backgrounds because I like to focus mostly on the main character here. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I like to do. So, oh, this is a cute one. This was an icon piece for a couple uh, from some of my friends. Uh, and then my Sona, of course. Can't draw enough of my boy, my floofy boy. Uh, and more into... Okay, so this is actually bringing up a point that I learned after the fact of when I ordered this book. Uh, you can see that these images are somewhat pretty dark. And on my computer screen, though, they're obviously a lot brighter because they're lit by pixels on a screen. Uh, when, when you're doing physical mediums, uh, printing isn't always going to show the exact, the exact black point of an image. So keep that in mind if you have somewhat of a dark image like these because they will show up much darker when you physically print them other than just looking at it on your phone or a tablet or something. So what I could do to correct this was to take the image and then edit the contrast and brightness before I submit these images to print. And that's a lot of the cases with um, figuring out what are the right settings. It's just this trial and error process when you are submitting things to print physically. Um, manufacturers have a lot of different settings and and you even if you're printing out your own stuff personally to sell 
it's really important to think about what is the finished product going to look like once you print it because it it will always pretty much change. Uh, so these are all the things that I learned after the fact. So you can still see here, yeah, very dark, but I still wanted to show um, some of my earlier commissions back in, I think this was, yeah, 2019. A lot of cute couples in this one. Uh, some character ref sheets that I've done before. Uh, I like. I I used to really like doing these because uh, when somebody needs a character design that they have in their head, they can just submit to me the idea, and then I just try to bring it to life the best they can, the best that I can in a style that they like from me. So these are always fun to do because it also means that I can biasly create something that uh, will make more art for the the client, so they can submit this to other artists, and then they'll make more art of their really cool sonas. So that's what I really like doing. Another character ref here. Uh, <laughs> my boyfriend's docky that I made. So I put I put one image here on the front of the of the front of the docky and then on the back. <laughs> I, I really do like how this came out. This was my first attempt at a docky. Uh, so this is also my boy that I made a badge for uh, for a cyberpunk themed uh, convention that was coming up that I sadly had to miss because of the pandemic. But uh, Anyway, I, I still really like the cyberpunk aesthetic, so that's what I tried to do here. Uh, let's see. Uh, this one I just included because it's on the front of the cover, and this is the full piece. So you can see, like, I, I wanted to do this clash of, like, oh, my human side and my, you know, silly dog side. That's, uh, I don't know if it's a bit edgy or whatever, but I thought it was pretty fun. Um, yeah. And some more commission work, icon commissions that I've done for people over the years. Um, there you go. And yeah, you can get an idea of like for most of these pictures in this book, the the pages are a bit glossy, so you can see a bit of the sheen coming off of the the bend of the page. But overall, it oh that was my poster falling. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, they are coming together really well. Uh, I think. There's not really a single piece in here that I don't think that came out really poorly printed. And the build quality of this is super solid. I haven't found like any loose um, glue or any of the pages tearing out. And I've been through this. I've leafed through this book a, a good handful of times. So some more like final painted pieces that I've done. You can see I also put more of the major, uh, more expensive and more time costing pieces in the back to sort of show the progression. So, yeah, some personal one-off pieces that I've done, just like an ice wolf and a fire wolf that I wanted to do one day as just like a cool contrast. Uh, let's see. Ooh, some fun uh, video gaming type of work that I wanted to do of some characters of my friends. And uh, this was for Nonstop Pups. Uh, he did this Minecraft server uh, get-together where... Uh, you, we, it was basically a digital convention where a whole bunch of artists could put up their co convention booths so they could sell their art digitally online on this Minecraft server. So this is one of the sort of promotional arts for it. And I think the theme was somewhat like a Olympic or something like that. Uh, so I thought that was really fun. Uh, some more commission work. And uh, yeah, again, I really like doing these single character pieces where you could just focus on a super cool action pose or something happening, like the one of my tiger friends in space fixing a satellite. It's, I don't know, that was super fun. That, this was actually an art trade where we, um, another artist and I, we drew each other's boyfriends. So I really thought that that was sweet. Uh, more of those same characters, but in a different sort of format. Um, and this is where, maybe this is where you can max out the type of ratio that you could do. So I did a very ultra wide piece that I, I did for basically my Twitter banner before. And I just really liked it. So I, I put it in this really awkward square, uh, ratio, but I still wanted to show it. So I put it in there and then the next page I cropped it to focus more on the characters. So that was really fun. This little dragon quest slime here adventuring with in a sort of RPG setting. And yeah, that is that. Um, in a way, I could have reserved maybe the the front uh, pages for like an index just to show uh, how I could have organized this better. But yeah, simply put, um, I really like the quality of this book and how it came out. So 
there you guys go. So there you have it. I hope you guys uh, like this sort of idea and how it could be improved upon. I would really like to know if uh, you guys have any other formats or sort of mediums to showcase your art in like fun and creative ways. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.